Hi, Corey and Donna. Thanks for joining our virtual SA membership discussion today. I'm so glad you can meet up and talk about SA membership, and I hope that we can answer some of the most common questions around SA membership. I think there are many people out there that are very interested in the mobility engineering field, but they just don't know the next step to take. And I used to be one of those people until I became an SA member. If you guys don't mind, just let me give you a quick background story of my journey of how I became involved in SAE. During high school, I lived just outside of Chicago, Illinois, and I was very interested in mechanical and electrical things. And I loved anything with wheels. And I know I wanted to know more about how to make these things better and how, of course, very fast. Right after high school graduation, I immediately started into my automotive mechanic technician training. And I learned many of the most popular and basic SA standards, beginning with like the different SAE fastener grades that you can find, like your own at least hardware, and also the different SAE engine oil specifications. After graduating with my automotive technician degree, um, I just wanted to know more. And I actually went to the Detroit, Michigan area, and I ended up getting my um, mechanical engineering degree uh, at uh, Lawrence Tech just outside of Detroit and Southfield, Michigan. Uh, and I was fortunate enough that right after graduating college, I got a dream job working at GM Racing as a NASCAR engine development engineer. Uh, I got the chance to design NASCAR engine parts and I worked with the NASCAR teams and I got to travel all around the country. It was just amazing. Uh, I. The best part of it is I got to work with like really smart engineers and most of which are SA professional members. It was a really unforgettable experience and I wouldn't have got that job if it wasn't for being an SA member. So I've gone way too in depth on my background, but uh, can you please introduce yourself and explain your role at SAE? Hi, Matt. So, yeah, thank you so much for sharing your story. That was really impressive. I am Donna Edenhart, and I am the Director of Membership at SAE. Uh, I've been on board with SAE since 2013, but I've actually spent my entire professional career in the member-based organization space. So, I, I originally started at an organization in Washington, D.C. that represented a couple of automotive companies, and I was always familiar with um, SAE and the great work that it did. So when this opportunity presented itself, I was really excited. Um, in addition to handling membership matters, I also oversee our volunteer engagement and recruitment activities, which includes um, implementing a robust recognition campaign for all of the amazing volunteers that help out our mission and objectives each year. Hi, I am Corey Dillon. I am the Member Relations Specialist. Um, I started with SAE in the end of 2018, so I still like to say that I'm new. I still claim that title. Um, but I support all things membership, so that's member recruitment, member retention, working on new benefits, working with our student members. So yeah, I'm really excited to continue the journey. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, guys. Can you tell us a little bit of history about SA? Well, if you don't mind, Corey, I'm going to take that one. History is my favorite. I always love telling the story of SAE. So we were actually founded in 1905 by 30 pioneering individuals who were interested in sharing information about the then fledgling automotive industry. Um, what's really neat to know is about seven years into the organization, we actually developed our very first standard, which I think is really impressive. Somewhere down the line, we decided to incorporate very smartly the needs of the aerospace and commercial vehicle industries. And today we have student and professional members in about 90 countries all over the world. So we have grown quite a lot since 1905. Wow, that's pretty cool. I know. It's awesome to know that there's so many SE members all over the world. I actually have some friends uh, from college that now live in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and they're SA members and we get to chat you know, through social media, but it's, it's such a wide range of area that SAE covers. It's really cool. So why should anyone want to be an SAE member? Uh, uh, hey, Corey, if you don't mind, I'm going to be selfish and take that 
question. We're going to start off with that question as well, um, because I get that quite a bit in, in the years that I've been at SAE. When somebody asks me why they should join SAE, one of my favorite things to do is turn around and say, well, what do you actually need from SAE? I need to understand your needs so that I can tell you how SAE can help you advance your personal or professional aspirations. Um, basically, what we like to say is you get out of SAE what you want to get. We have a lot of opportunities in the form of leadership opportunities. We provide access to technical information. We provide networking experiences. We have um, awards and recognitions. So again, it's pretty much um, we have to pay attention to what our members' needs are. That's our job. And then we make sure that we develop as many programs and services and benefits that will meet those needs. So again, at the end of the day, it's all about where you are in your career. So if you're in your 20s, your needs are probably going to be a little bit different than somebody who joins in maybe their 40s or their 50s. And then you need to look at our, our, our benefits portfolio, see what we have to offer. And if we don't have something that meets your needs, tell us about it. And we'll work as hard as we can to make sure that we come up with something that will help you further along and, and advance your, your aspirations. And, you know, it's funny. Actually, um, since I do like turning the tables, Matt. Now, if you don't mind, I, I know you told us a little bit about your background, but I would actually love to hear why you joined SAE. Because I can talk as long as I want to talk, but I would love to hear it from a real-life member. Yeah, sure. I actually remember when I first joined um, back in 2007, 2008 school year, and I actually have my uh, my membership card when I first got it in the mail. I still keep it in my wallet. Um, but the reason why I joined up to be an SAE member is still the same reason I am one today. And that is the reason is because I just want to know more. And like when I say more, I mean more about science and engineering and taking those disciplines and making really cool things with them. And I, I really love how being an SA member, I get to connect with people who share the same common understandings of using like science and engineering, making the world a more connected place. So those are the real reasons of why I became an SA member. Um, since we're talking about connections, um, what are some of the networking opportunities that SA has to offer? Well, I will take that question now, Donna, if you don't mind. So we have a couple of different ways that members can connect with each other. Um, first and foremost, when you become a member, you are automatically placed into what we call an SAE section. So these are groups of SAE members depending upon your geography, your location, your zip code. So for example, since you live in the Detroit area, you are automatically part of the Detroit section. If you were back in Chicago area, you would be part of the Chicago section. And so sections are a great way to meet members in your local area. You know, sections host meetings, they host events and speakers. So it's a great way to connect locally and in person. Well, currently not in person, but you know, someday you'll be able to do that again. Uh, and one of, the, one of the easiest ways to connect with other members, not just in your local area, but globally. So we talked about how we have members in what, 90 different countries. We have an online forum for our SAE members only called Member Connection. That's connection.sae.org. And this is where members come to talk about whatever they want to talk about in the industry. So the latest technologies, the latest, um, you know, issues going on, such as how do we alter travel with the COVID-19 in the world. Um, autonomous vehicles is always one of the hottest topics in there. I think someone always brings that up at least once a month. So it's a great way to connect, to talk, to see what other engineers are working on and thinking about. Um, and so we also have a great way for members to come together at our SAE events. Um, at our at least three main events, so that's um, uh, WCX for the automotive industry, we have Comvac for commercial vehicle and Aerotech for our aerospace group. Uh, we like to host our member lounges. So this is where, you know, we want to welcome our members and we want to talk to you face to face when we can do that again. 
and just have a place for you guys to come in a little space that might be a little bit quiet. You know, on the show floor, there's lots of noise, lots of things happening. So this is your space to come and talk. Um, we also do host um, some events in our member lounges. We actually just recently started hosting a lecture. So just a quick side note, we do have um, what we call the Industrial Lecture Program. It's our collegiate speaker program where our student members can invite a professional to come talk to their university for free as a benefit. And finally, circling back to member connection, we have a mentor community. So this is a great way to find another mentor or a mentee or both if you choose to fill both roles and just talk about you know, mentoring topics, interests, technologies, et cetera. Hey, Corey, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd like to chime in for a minute. I'm gonna get us off a little bit into the weeds, but something you said reminded me that I wanted to bring um, one of our most important objectives to everybody's attention. So Corey touched on the mentor community. That reminded me that um, you know what our primary objectives, one of them for 2020 is to increase female engagement across all of SAE, so through membership and, and other volunteer activities. And what we have done is several activities in different areas. One of them is utilizing the mentor community. We actually hosted a mentor, a virtual mentor mixer with a bunch of dynamic female leaders in member connection. I believe that was hosted in May and it got a lot of, of great responses and attraction. Another thing that we did in Member Connection is we actually, we hold these regular chat with the expert series. And in, I believe it was in March, we invited about eight experts, um, women again in the industry to come in and answer some questions from our members. Um, and that was a really impactful discussion. Uh, I would encourage you if you haven't already checked it out to go into Member Connection and read up on that. In April, we featured a cover story called Women with Impact. And we actually invited in a special writer um, to author that for, her, for us. Her name is Kinsey Olson Sovereign, and she is very active in the Dayton section. And if you haven't read that article yet, it's really impactful. It, she shares her own personal experiences about what it's like being a woman working in today's industry, and then talks a little bit more broadly about being a working woman in general. Great article um, to check out in, in our update magazine. And then um, finally, uh, Corey has actually been really instrumental in going out and securing uh, female speakers as part of our industrial lecture series. That's our series where we have speakers go around the country and speak to college students. And we have our two very first women speakers, one of which just so happens to be with the Detroit section. Um, if anybody is familiar with Mara Shemelowick, she's fantastic, and um, she has got gained a great deal of popularity within the industrial lecture series. And then one more final note, we are currently working on two podcasts. SAE has a podcast series called SAE Tomorrow Today, and we have invited two amazing um, women from the industry who are going to be guests on that podcast series. I believe they will be ready for prime time in the very near future. But the whole point of the story is to shine that, spot, that spotlight on um, these amazing women and tell those stories so that we can encourage and inspire others to become part of SAE. I apologize for interjecting that. I just thought it was a, a really um, important thing to mention. Yeah, that's great. Wow. So much is going on. A lot. But it's amazing <laughs> that we have so many networking opportunities available. So tell me, what are some leadership or career enhancement opportunities that SA also offers? So I'll take that one again. Um, as a follow-up, since I previously mentioned sections, sections are a, you know, very well organized machines, you know, so they have um, a chair, which is the president or leader of the group, you know, secretary or a treasurer. So those are great ways to get involved. Um, and I know, Matt, you yourself are part of the section, the Detroit section. So if you wanted to say, like, what's great about that leadership opportunity? Yeah, I joined the SA uh, Detroit section board because I just wanted to be more involved locally at a professional level. And uh, also, I get to connect with like-minded engineers. 
So uh, if you're watching this and you want to be involved in SAE, feel free to contact your local uh, chapter and see if there are any open positions. Absolutely. Um, and then members can also take it a step further. And SAE has what we call the board of directors. So they are the higher level you know, group of members who govern SAE International and support SAE's mission. And then occasionally, um, the membership team itself creates what we call our ad hoc panels. So we go out and seek membership insights on certain topics or ideas. So just as an example, we created the student panel, uh, what, two years ago now, Donna? And this is a group of young professionals, um, student member graduates or alumni. And we kind of just pick their brains and we meet to, to come up with new student ideas or ways to get students more involved in SAE. And, you know, in relationship to enhancing your career, there is the aforementioned uh, mentor community and member connections. So you can become a mentor or a mentee. You can build up your networking. You can learn more about the industry, the workforce, um, mentoring topics like how to manage your time better, how to ask for a raise or a promotion. Um, and then finally, uh, the membership team has created what we call the Career Counselor Series. So this is all made in-house. My manager, Amanda Hildebrand, actually asks, acts as a host or interviewer to our um, career counselor or expert, Allison Lyon. She is a uh, professional you know, executive leadership coach, and she and Amanda will then talk about you know, certain soft topics or skills that you can use in the workplace, like uh, some of the other topics I mentioned, like time management, goal setting, how to work with different generations in the workplace. And so those videos are usually 25 to 30 minutes, and they can also be found on member connection. Hey, hey um, uh, Matt, do you mind if I just respond to something that Corey said really quickly? When I mentioned earlier about um, how we pay attention and listen to what our members' needs are, Career Counselor was actually one really great example of that because um, we noticed that there were some students that were struggling um, with giving their sales presentations during, during the uh, collegiate design series competitions. So we wanted to make sure that we were touching on those soft skills. Um, so that we could help them, and that is how Career Counselor came to be. So um, I'm not kidding. When we say we're listening, we are listening and responding. So that is awesome. In my member connection profile, I actually subscribe to uh, um, any. I, I get any emails. I get any updates through email, mm -hmm. and uh, I on my lunch break, I'll go in to member connection, see that some latest posts, and watch some of those soft skills videos. I. I I, I'm always a fan for keeping my soft skills you know, up to date, nice and sharp. So I really enjoy those videos. What are some of the ways that SA members can be recognized for their achievements? Oh, okay. Well, I will um, actually field that one. There are a number of ways. Um, first and foremost, SAE has an awards program, and many of those awards are for members only. So I encourage you to nominate yourself or not, not nominate someone else for one of SAE's many awards. Um, of course, there is SAE Fellows, which is the most prestigious grade of membership. Members to nominate other members for this distinction. And we currently have about 405 active fellows. When I said this is prestigious, I mean, these are the cream of the industry crop, so to speak. Our nominations for SAE Fellows are always due annually on July 1. Um, some of the other ways that we have, a um, couple of fun things that we do, we like to feature dossiers in both of our member publications, SAE Update, which is our professional newsletter for um, professional members, and then um, Momentum, which is our student me member magazine, love to read about other members. So, um, like your story, for example, Matt, would be a great story to feature as a dossier, especially in momentum, because it would inspire the younger generation um, to learn, you know, how you advance your career through SAE. So, those dossiers are a great way to recognize. Uh, and then, of course, we have, I mentioned before, that we oversee our volunteer 
engagement activities, we want to make sure that we are also recognizing the amazing volunteers who do so much for SAE all year long. So we have a robust recognition program that includes SAE Recognition Day, which is one day each year that we give a great big collective virtual hug to our 60,000 strong base of volunteers. Um, and then we also have established a, an award specifically for some of the overachievers. We have a lot of people that give so much to SAE. So we created the top contributor um, class um, that really recognizes those, those individuals that I said that go above and beyond. And then from that group, we actually select an individual to receive the top contributor of the year award. So um, we really think it's important to give back to those who give so much to the organization. And that's what that recognition program is all about. Very cool. It's awesome that we get to recognize our members. Um, I've been lucky enough to get a couple of SA awards. Um, and if there's any students watching this, um, make sure your faculty advisors are uh, turning in some nominations for you so you can be recognized for all of your hard work. So can you tell me how much it costs for a student or professional membership at SAE? Sure, I can take that one. Um, currently for student membership, it's $35 per year and professional membership is $120 per year. You know, last year, we actually did some research to see how SAE membership dues compare to similar organizations like IEEE or ASME, for example. And not only do our dues come in, you know, on average much lower than these other organizations, but we are the only ones to offer our student member graduates their first year professional membership for free. So zero dollars, as soon as you graduate, you become a professional member. But then after that, so other organizations, like other organizations, we offer a ramp up dues. So It'll be discounted for the next three years and you won't pay full, full dues until year five. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Corey. That's a really important thing to note. I mean, the truth of the matter is at the end of the day, all of the dues monies that we receive, uh, we use directly to help shape up our programming. And in, 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 um, that includes you know, things like member connection, our, our mentor community, even our volunteer platform. Those monies that come in that we can use support other programs and activities. Um, but we do understand to Corey's point that when you get right out of school, you don't have a lot of, of spare cash laying around. So we want to make sure that we pay special attention to that and that we provide a very affordable situation for our younger members. Thanks, Donna. So much has changed in the past few decades due to the dawn of the internet and information is so easily accessible nowadays. Can you tell me why membership in any association or professional society is still relevant today? Sure, um, I can take that one. So I am a true believer that you get what you put into your membership. You are just coming here for the technical information, for standards, for papers, that's fine. But, you know, I feel that membership, that our world today, the industry is really about making connections. So we have talked a lot about networking. We've talked about member connection and getting involved in your section. And I truly believe that that is what makes membership important. The industry is constantly changing and not just, you know, in your silos of the automotive or the commercial vehicle or the aerospace, you know. We meet and talk to a lot of members when we go out to events in different companies saying, oh, I used to be an aerospace engineer, but now I'm working at Ford on cars or vice versa. So there's a lot of crossover. And the best way for members to stay, you know, up to what's happening and up to speed is to connect with each other. And, you know, you've even talked a lot about how, you know, you have friends in Brazil who you still talk to, who you are making those connections with. So it's also just expanding your scope, you know, from your local city, your area, your company to a broader what's happening around the rest of the country and around the world. Awesome. Thank you so much, Corey. And I completely agree. There's so many networking opportunities out there that SAE offers. 
So after someone watches this video and wants to join today, what is the first thing that that person should do? Wow, that's a really great question, Matt, and I, I appreciate you asking it. Um, first and foremost, I do want to point out that once a member joins, the very first thing that happens is they receive a welcome kit in the mail within about two weeks that lays out all of their benefits. Um, in addition to that, it is important to mention that um, we now, I had to laugh when you talked about still having your, your membership card which I think is really amazing that you still have that because so many members have like this old dilapidated, you know, piece of paper um, wrinkled up in their wallets for years that was almost like disintegrating. So we have um, joined the new, um, the new century and we are now offering members digital membership cards. So within a few days, actually, you will receive an email once you join SAE that allows you to download your digital membership card to your smartphone, which is really cool. Um, Feel free to still hang on to your, your laminated card though, Matt. I'm not, I'm not suggesting you part with that, but we do have the digital card option now. Um, and in the meantime, another thing that, that members can do once they join is go right into Member Connection that we've been talking about all day, connection.sae.org. Fill out a profile and there is one of our longest standing threads in there suggesting that you introduce yourself. And that is a great first way to, to say hello to other members, tell them who you are and what you're interested in talking about. And then another thing that you could do if you're really one of those people that wants to volunteer, then we have SAE Propel. You can access through that through the homepage of Member Connection as well. Um, SAE Propel is our platform for volunteer opportunities. So go in there, you can fill out a profile and explain what your interests are um, so that the system will automatically ping you when an opportunity pops up. Or of course you can sign up for one of the, um, there's usually about 70 or more volunteer opportunities that are in there and you could um, throw your hat in the ring immediately and begin volunteering right off of the bat. So um, those are the things that are coming to my mind right off the bat. Corey, do you have anything to add? Do you think would be a, a good first starter for a member? So one of the most common questions we actually, actually receive is how do I get my receipt? So you should receive an email with your invoice within a couple of hours of completing your purchase. Um, if you don't get that for some reason or another, it goes to your spam folder. You can always email our customer service at customerservice at sae.org. Finally, there's a third way to get that receipt. So you can go into your My SAE account at sae.org and it should be under your invoices. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Donna and Corey, for all of this information. Uh, you definitely answered the most common questions that I get. Um, this was really fun. I, I loved learning about all the initiatives for women that, this year and the mentor community. I really need to sign up and be a mentor because um, that's something I would definitely enjoy. So if you're interested in becoming a member, please visit us at sa.org slash join. And if you're already a member, please visit connection.sa.org. If you have questions about membership or how to volunteer, please email membership team at sae.org. Or if you have any customer service needs, please visit customer service at sae.org. And if you're interested in following us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Instagram, come on by. And for any other questions, please visit www.sae.org. So thanks Donna and Corey for today's discussion. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right. Thanks, guys.